server has been identified to be one of the crops that can be used to, medi to mitigate climate change. And a lot of countries are now embarking on cassava research and production. But the crop is seriously affected by two major virus diseases, known as cassava brown streak and the cassava mosaic. So this, this is cause really losses that uh, can amount to billions of US dollars. We have different countries in the region that are spearheading cassava research so that we can ensure we have varieties that are resistant to the two diseases but with the user characteristics that we can track fast track to deploy to farmers. Each of the five participating countries contributed five of their best varieties. It takes a minimum of eight to ten years to start variety development until you release. In areas where cassava is grown, there is no food insecurity. Uh, cassava mosaic makes sure that the, the, the yield comes from almost to zero. Eh? The cassava brown streak, the yield will be there, but you cannot eat that produce. It is rotten. So either way, we have to have a dual resistance. We have to pyramid the two characters. We call them characteristics. We have to pyramid them into one variety, also each variety, with a high yield and added value and good agronomic practice to ensure food security. We have a big breeding program in IETA for cassava, both in the West Africa as well as in the East Africa. So, But in the West Africa, CBSD is not in West Africa. So the, our material which comes from the West Africa is basically it is resistant to CMD. And IET has released a lot of cassava varieties which has resistance to CMD. And cassava mosaic requires. Um, then when it comes to, to the East Africa, then our breeders in East Africa actually they, uh, they breed it to mix the two viral diseases together. So that means they, they cross two germ plus, which has the CMD resistance and the CBSD resistance, which they have screened from the East Africa to get a variety which has the dual resistance to the both viral diseases. We are really pleased to be involved in this uh, very important project that will solve the problems of farmers in sub-Saharan Africa. From this one plant, you are supposed to develop about 45,000 plants from plants this size. It has not been an easy task. We've had our challenges and we have learned a lot of lessons through this uh, project on cassava handling, mainly on uh, protocols development and optimization. And we have seen that uh, not every cassava you can put in tissue culture and they multiply fast. We've seen that there are some varieties which take too long to multiply. And so we have our lessons learned in that, uh, in that aspect. In East Africa, actually, there are several countries who has uh, good capacity, uh, both uh, in terms of the international institution, but as well as the national institutions. There are a lot of national institutions who had capacity to handle these two diseases um, uh, at the level of the diagnostics. So that means you can diagnose the diseases there, but also uh, improve uh, crop improvement and also the management of the diseases. Um, very, very happy to receive these materials. I promise our chief guest, the managing director of GTIL, that these materials will be taken care of, they will be evaluated, and it is to the benefit of our African farmer so that we can identify varieties that are resistant to the two diseases to enable the farmers increase productivity, to enable the countries where this project is being done to contribute to food security, income generation, and the well-being of our people. Thank you very much, and I'm sure the peers in Uganda, Tanzania, Malawi, and Mozambique share the joy 
that I have right now. Thank you.